magnesium, calcium, those are electrolytes that actually produce electricity in our... Uh, Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwad. In this short video, I'm going to talk about the third abundant mineral in our body called potassium. Now, potassium is also an electrolyte. Now, what does an electrolyte do? An electrolyte, hence the name, gives us electricity. It helps produce electricity. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we have a pump throughout our cells. Okay, we have a lot of these pumps and they gener help generate electricity in our body, which again, which uh, sustains a lot of energy. And this is called the sodium potassium pump. Now in a cell structure, it's kind of like, again, it's like a doorway. It's a pumping mechanism where sodium is, is pumped inside the cell, thus in turn will shunt potassium out of the cell. And that's called the sodium potassium pump in very, very easy terms. Now again, those are electrolytes. So what they do is that they help generate electricity throughout our body. Now, potassium, potassium is very, very important. It is the third abundant mineral in our body. Now, minerals like sodium, chloride, calcium, magnesium, those are very, those are abundant minerals that our bodies need for normal cellular function. And potassium is the third most abundant mineral that our body needs. However, most Americans are deficient in potassium. Now, what is the function of potassium? The function of potassium is six, again, five functions. There's more, but I'm just gonna list the top five. Number one, involved in muscle contraction. Number two, it helps regulate fluid and mineral balance. Because again, potassium is a third abundant mineral, it helps regulate those, those, the fluid and the mineral balance in our system. It helps maintain blood pressure. Potassium is a wonderful way of actually lowering blood pressure naturally because what it does, it helps blunt sodium. It helps get sodium out of the system, and I'll explain in a minute. Also too, it may lower the risk of kidney stones. And also too, it helps, the function of potassium, it helps the liver store sugar, okay? Helps the liver store the sugar for later usage. Now again, we have a process called gluconeogenesis, and that is we, just, we get energy from, lip, from our liver in between meals, in, our, in between our fasting state, okay? So the benefits of potassium, heart health, because it helps regulate the sodium potassium pump. So when sodium comes into the cell, okay, it, water follows it. So when you have too much water, I'm sorry, too, too much sodium in the system, it clumps up the blood. So increasing your potassium intake, again, I always say don't lower your, so I mean, monitor your sodium, but what you need to do, you need to actually increase your potassium intake because when you, put, when you increase your potassium intake, it actually shunts out the sodium in your cell, okay, in the sodium potassium pump mechanism because if there's too much sodium, if water follows, increase the potassium con the, uh, content and what that's going to do, that's going to shunt out the sodium, it's going to decrease your blood pressure naturally. Also, too, fewer cramps. Now, again, fewer cramps, it's going to help balance out the electrolytes. Lower stroke risk and lower blood pressure. Okay, again, with the sodium-potassium pump, when there's too much sodium in the body, again, it helps, it retains water. Your body is going to retain water. It's going to make the blood thicker, which actually is going to increase the peripheral resistance throughout your system. So your heart, the left ventricle, is actually having to pump harder. Okay, so... Increasing, your, increasing the potassium is going to help lower the stroke risk, risk and also too, it's going to help lower blood pressure. Also, the key thing about potassium, it, ha, it also, it hides cellulite, okay? It will help reduce cellulite because what is cellulite? Cellulite is just the body's holding water. So again, so with too much, with the sodium, holds the water, increase the potassium, shunts out the water, okay? It's going to actually inver inadvertently lower your sodium content it's going to get rid of the water because you're going to increase your potassium. Also, too, it's going to fight osteoporosis. Yes, we need calcium. Yes, we need phosphorus. Yes, we need vitamin D3. Yes, we need vitamin K2. Again, for helping with the absorption of calcium into the bone. But also, because calcium is excitatory and calcium is acidic, Potassium is good to deacidify the system and help shunt the calcium and phosphorus into the bones, thus lowering the, lowering the uh, 
uh, incidence of osteoporosis. So again, so if you're deficient in, in potassium, you're going you're to experience fatigue. You're going to experience constipation. You're going to get muscle cramps. You're going to get blood pressure problems. You're going to get cellulite problems. You're going to get depression. You're going to get confusion. You get heart palpitations. You get weight gain. You get irritability. All because, again, potassium is essential for cells to work to help balance out the electrolytes, which, again, with the purpose of electrolytes is to generate electricity in our cell. So how do you get potassium? Now again, if, if you get potassium if in a supplement, that's awesome. However, you're gonna, you're gonna take a lot of them. So I always, first and foremost, I always encourage, watch the diet. Now again, these are top 10 foods in no particular order, but each food though does have a different level of potassium in them. So you may wanna do your research on what is the best for you. But again, number one, avocados, loaded in potassium. Two, acorn squash, actually any type of squash is, is high in potassium, whether it be acorn squash, butternut squash, or any of the squashes out there, it's high in potassium. Next, spinach. Now, spinach is, is loaded with potassium, but also to uh, the family of green leafy vegetables. I always recommend green leafy vegetables for, again, for, the, for the potassiums, for the calciums, for the iron, for all those minerals that help, again, stabilize the body. Sweet potatoes. Now, the key thing about sweet potatoes is you must eat the skin. The skin of the sweet potato, and also too, white potatoes, but a, sweet potatoes are better for to help stabilize blood sugar. The sweet potato, the skin, is loaded in not only potassium, but also too, it's high in fiber. So keep that in mind. Wild caught salmon. Wild caught salmon, make sure it's wild caught because again, those are organically fed. Dried apricots. Now, <clears throat> dried apricots loaded in potassium. I recommend dried apricots. The one thing you have to watch out for dry apricots is that it's high in sugar. So you want to, you want to monitor the dried apricot in, intake because again, yes, it's going to help store sugar in the liver. However, if you have too much sugar in the, in the, in the system, it's going to spike the insulin, increase spikes of insulin is going to cause inflammation. Pomegranates. Now pomegranates, not only are they high in potassium, but pomegranates are loaded in antioxidants. Coconut water, the best loaded with potassium coconut water. Next, white beans. Now, I've done the research on this list, and per se, bar none, white beans, a cup of white beans does have a, the most potassium in it in this whole list, next to avocados. Last, white mushrooms. White mushrooms loaded in potassium. Now, if you notice on this list, I don't have bananas. The reason being is, be, yes, bananas does, does have potassium. However, on the fruit scale, potassium, I'm sorry, bananas are loaded with sugar. Okay, so that's why I always say you want to watch, you don't have too many bananas. Don't rely on bananas for potassium. Now, the key thing is, is the RDA. Now, if you look on this chart, the, again, for the sodium, the recommended daily allowance of sodium is 1,000 milligrams per day. The recommended daily allowance of potassium is 4,700 milligrams per day. That's over four times. So again, so with a sodium potassium pump, you need more potassium to help function with the pump to get sodium out of the cell. Now, the, again, so you see potassium, we need a large quantity of potassium over sodium. Now, the average, the average American we're, is flipped over. We're taking too much sodium. The average 3,700 milligrams of sodium versus 1,000 milligrams of potassium. This is why right here, this is your average. This is why we have a lot of these symptoms. High blood pressure, kidney stones, muscle spasms. I always tell my patients, monitor the sodium, yes, but increase the potassium. Because as long as you're incre increasing the potassium, you're getting that fluid out of the cell. So I always say before you start shunting down your, your sodium, increase your potassium. Take it in foods or else take it in a supplement form. Okay, but remember, if you take it in a supplement form, the average supplement is only 99 milligrams of potassium per pill. So you're gonna, take, you're gonna have to take handfuls. So again, what is potassium? Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, share with a friend, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Hello, this is Dr. Juad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos. And thanks for watching.